Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 27. Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. I believe that it is healthy to every once in a while take some time, saint and sinner alike, to think about the judgment. We're all heading to that great judgment seat of Christ. And for many people that day is going to come quicker than they ever anticipated. And if we're not careful, we can begin to almost become immune to the idea that one day, in all finality, we're going to stand before Almighty God. And many people are living in a manner that they're not comfortable appearing before Christ, having that been the way they lived. God is not trying to send anyone to hell. I think sometimes when we hear preaching on the judgment, we almost think of it as like you're going to get to the judgment and God's going to put this gotcha when you get there. But that's not really the intention of God. If anyone lands in hell, it will be despite all that God did to avoid them getting there. But regardless of that, we are going to the judgment and we're going to give an account for every deed that was ever done in our body. We're going to stand before God. And we should live with that awareness that we are going before God. Our thought tonight, judgment day ready. Judgment day ready. Some people think that somehow, somewhere along the line, they're going to be ready for the judgment. And somehow that day never comes. You're going to be accountable for all that you have done. Amen. And you're going to be accountable for all that God has been faithful enough to reveal to you concerning your experience with Him and your relationship to Him long before you ever get there. Each soul is accountable for what they did. Each soul is accountable for what they did with the gospel, with the light, with the understanding that they had. Amen. And ultimately... You're going to be accountable for what you did with Christ. No one is really going to hell for this sin or that sin. They're going to hell because they rejected Christ. Because they rejected Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, please. Verse number 9. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. Many people are living to get the acceptability of somebody. They're, getting, they're living to garner some kind of approval from someone or something, and whether or not they're actually okay doesn't really matter. If they have the approval of that person, if they have the approval of their minister, if they have the approval of the people with whom they surround themselves... Amen. They feel that they'll be accepted or they feel good about themselves. But the one thing about the judgment is that it's all coming out. One thing about the judgment is there will be nothing hidden. There will be nothing undone. Amen. It will be exactly as it is. It will be 100% transparent in the judgment. He said, for we must all appear. So whether Paul sees you or not, whether the ministry is with you or not, amen, whether you're... Uh, surrounded by the saints or not, no matter what your image may be, whether, whether you're real good in public or whether you're real good in, or you appear real well in public, but behind closed doors you're somebody else, then the judgment is coming out. It's coming out. 
Amen. God is going to expose people in the judgment. Amen. Because we can kind of fix it up down here. Amen. We can kind of make ourselves look good. And especially if you spend any time around the church of God, amen, you know the lingo. You know how to kind of fit in. You know how to conform. Amen. But that does not mean you're accepted of God. Amen. And in the judgment, amen, you'll either be accepted or denied. And it will be final then. It will be final then. Every deed will be made known. Amen. All that was done in secret, all that was done behind closed doors, amen, those secret intentions, those secret motives, amen, we'll know it for sure in the judgment. You might have said you didn't mean that, but God knows whether or not you did. Amen. You might have said, I didn't lust, but God knows whether or not you did. Amen. You might say, I told the truth, but God knows whether or not you actually did. And in the judgment, you're going to be held accountable to this word. Nothing is getting, be, be, uh, nothing is getting by God. Amen. The judgment will be the great equalizer. You can worry about this person getting away with that. Amen. You might feel like, amen, there's this kind of injustice and this sort of, amen, it's unfair. Amen. But I'll tell you what, in the judgment, it's all going to be fair. You're going to receive exactly, amen, what, is, what you had coming. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. I'm not asking you tonight whether you're getting ready for the judgment. I'm asking if the judgment were to happen right now, would you be ready? If the judgment were, if the skies were to split tonight, the world was over, amen, and we were standing face to face before God. If this was your night, if in two hours from now you had an appointment at the judgment, amen, how comfortable would you be standing before God tonight? Amen. Many people feel they're trying to get some things right and they're trying to get some things situ situated. But listen, that day is going to come upon you unawares. Amen. That day is going to come. Many people have gone off into eternity and they never saw it coming. Amen. And God, you are going to stand before God exactly how you are. Amen. You might admit to make that apology. You might admit, to, amen, to make that thing right. Amen. You might admit to take care of that. But in the judgment, too late. It'll be too late then. Amen. You're going to stand face to face before God. You better get your wrongs right now. You better get yourself situated now. Because in the judgment, too late. It's too late. Amen. And many people are waiting Amen. And have forgotten about things. The Spirit of God tried to check them. The Spirit of God trying to uh, stir their heart, trying to rub their conscience. Amen. And they've gone over it and they've gone over it and they've forgotten about it. Amen. And that's why people are going to be shocked in the judgment. Amen. That's why it's almost going to seem like it's going to be a gotcha in the judgment. But God was faithful. Amen. God did his part. He talked to you about that attitude. Amen. He told you to make that apology. He told you to make that thing right. Amen. He told you to make that adjustment. Amen. But people will go over and go past and grieve the Holy Spirit. And when you grieve the Holy Spirit, he withdraws himself. We must all appear before. This is an unavoidable meeting. You will go there. Every saint, every sinner, every hypocrite will stand before God in the judgment. And you'll be judged. And you'll be judged not by my standard and not by your standard. You will be judged by the word of the living God. Amen. The, what, the last thing you'll meet in the judgment is the word. Amen. I'd rather face it now. Amen. I'd rather face it now. Amen. Than face it in the judgment. The difference between th now and then. Amen. Is that there's mercy now. Amen. There'll be none then. Amen. Let us understand God's not trying to send anyone to hell. Amen. God's not trying to send anyone to hell. Amen. God doesn't send anyone to hell. Amen. But God, God has been faithful enough, amen, to send his son into the world, to give us the word, to send us message after message, amen, to send us scripture after scripture. If we end up lost, it will be our own fault. And some people are going to be lost sitting right in the house. They're going to be lost sitting right in the house. Amen. And they're going to go to the judgment singing out of the evening light songbook. Amen. And having gone over and gone past the checks of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, for we must all appear. Amen. In Revelation, he said, I saw the small and the great. 
I saw the rich, I saw the poor, I saw the famous, I saw the nobody, amen. I saw them all, I saw everybody, what? Standing before God, amen. And the books were open, amen. You can get your little scripture and justify it if you want to, amen. But God's going to judge you by the word of God in the judgment and he's going to judge you by what he meant, amen, and by his interpretation, not yours. Amen. People have gotten to scripture, amen, and they feel like they can justify themselves. And oh, my conscience doesn't bother me. Amen. And this doesn't convict me. Oh, but in the judgment, amen, you're going to see it exactly how God saw it. Amen. I'm surprised by what doesn't bother some people's consciences. Amen. Many people, their conscience is not a good gauge. It is not a good gauge. Amen. I'll tell you what the best gauge is. The word of God. Amen. And whether, listen, there was a time in the Apostle Paul's life when he was rounding up Christians and he was killing them. Amen. And consenting to their death. Amen. And he thought he was doing the right thing. And if he had died in that condition and stood before Christ, he would have went to hell. Amen. Because he was going to be judged by the word of the living God. He was sincere. Amen. He was a sincere Pharisee. Amen. He was by the book. Amen. Trying to do it right. But he was sincerely wrong. He said, I did it in all good conscience. Amen. I did it. My conscience didn't. Paul, Paul's conscience wasn't bothering him a bit up until maybe Stephen. But he said, I was consenting to their. I persecuted the church of God. Amen. I, I, was, I was as fierce as opponent. Amen. And he didn't feel any compunction about it. Thought he was doing God's service. Amen. Thought he was doing all right. And there's many people today, amen, they're justifying things in their life, amen, and it will not be justified in the judgment. They're justifying the world. They're justifying the flesh. Amen. They're justifying compromise. Amen. They're justifying it, and they're going to stand before God one day, and it will not be justified in the judgment. Amen. Amen. People have let the world influence them and move them and shift their minds. Amen. And they think it's okay and they think it's acceptable. Amen. And they think they're going to be clear before God because their conscience isn't bothering them. Amen. But you can go past your conscience. Amen. You can go past that thing. Amen. And harden yourself. And I don't care whether you feel bad or not. If it's in violation of the word of God, it is enough to send you down. Amen. To be lost for all eternity. We better be careful what we allow in our homes and in our lives and what we're so easily justified. Because I'll tell you what, you can justify anything. You can justify anything. Amen. People who started off letting the world in their home, amen, they justified it a little by little. Amen. And a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. Amen. You should not be gauging it based on how you feel about it, but by how God feels about it. Amen. Before I engage, before I let this in my home, before I imbibe this type of entertainment. And last I checked, God is still against the world. Amen. And so that means God is still against worldly entertainment. I'm surprised, amen, by people who claim to be saved and sanctified are entertaining themselves with. Amen. They'll justify the movies. They'll justify music. Amen. They'll justify dress. Amen. They'll justify it and they'll justify it and they'll justify it. But I'll tell you, anybody that loves the world is the enemy of God. He is the enemy of God. That's what the scripture says. Amen. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It is not. The friendship of the world is enmity against God. And I want to tell you, amen, the world has crept into the church, amen, and people have justified it little by little. And I'm going to tell you what they're so comfortable in their homes tonight with, they will be shaken in their boots about in the judgment. Amen. They're going to be shaken in their boots in the judgment. Amen. They justify. Well, there's not that many curse words and there's not too many suggestive scenes and this, that, and the other. Well, listen, you tell me if Jesus would watch it. You tell me if Jesus would have one of those in his home. Amen. You tell me if Jesus would let his little girl dress like that. You tell me. Amen. And you're going to go to the judgment. You're going to see it just like that. You're going to see it just like that. Amen. There's too much loose living for people who are saying they're, too, they're going to the judgment. Amen. There's too much loose living, loose attitudes. Amen. Loose, loose, loose. Amen. People are paying more attention. Amen. To their worldly affairs and their spiritual affairs. Amen. They'll do inventory of this and they'll do inventory of that and they'll make sure all their ducks are in a row here on this side of eternity. Amen. And then live loose in their spiritual souls. 
getting lean, getting lean in their souls, amen, and some people, amen, lost their spiritual compass. They've lost their spiritual compass. Amen. They don't know which direction they're going. Amen. They, it's all formality. Amen. They don't want to go all the way out into the world, but they're not living like they're going to stand before God. There used to be a time, amen, when some of those six-year-old brethren, they'd write down their activities they went through that day. They would keep a, a, an inventory. How about my words? How about my tone? Amen. Man, did I, did I say that right? Did I treat that person right? Were my interactions pure? Were my thoughts pure? Amen. Before they would even go to bed at night, some of them would be doing inventory day by day. Why? Keeping up with it. Why? Because I may not make it to the morning. My, 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 next, my next appointment might be with God. Amen. I want to know the record's clear. Amen. I want to know that I'm clear. Amen. More people today are living with question marks. You got to get past the question marks. You need to know whether some things are right and wrong. And if you don't know, you better not touch it. I wouldn't touch it if I don't know. If I can't determine whether or not God approves of it, I wouldn't touch it. Before I let, amen, my TV in my home, I wouldn't touch it. You might be unclear about it. Maybe you're not really sure. Don't touch it. See, some people feel like because it's questionable, then they can do it. You can do whatever you want to do, but you're going to be comfortable in the judgment with it? Are you going to be comfortable in the judgment with it? Amen. You're going to get to the judgment living with the questionable. Amen. And the problem is there's no question marks in the judgment. God's going to render you a decision one way or the other. 1 John 4. We're not going to hold you long tonight. We're going to leave this with you. 1 John 4. Grieves my heart. Amen. To see how much questionable, question, question marks have crept into people's lives. Amen. Things the church of God was always against. I mean, was all, with good reason. Can back it up with scripture. Can back it up line by line. Let me hit this while I'm at it. In 1950, the television was beginning to enter into the majority of Americans' homes. I can't remember the exact year, but within five years, the United States went from one million people having a television in their home to I think it was like 50 million people having it in their home within five years. And the Church of God ministers realized they had to deal with this. They had to deal with this. And they had a minister's meeting sometime in the 50s. Many ministers present from across this country. And they had a minister's meeting about this particular topic alone. That's all. It was only about the television. They weren't addressing it. They said, listen, we see this thing. It is creeping into people's lives, into society, and where are we going to come on this? And listen, there's some things that need to be talked about and discussed because, listen, there was a time when some ministers got together and decided that having an icebox in your house was worldly until they realized, well, it's really convenient to keep your meat cold and keep your food preserved. Maybe an icebox isn't so worldly. But there was a different type of box coming into people's homes. And it wasn't an ice box. And it had a little more effect than the ice box did. Listen, there's a difference between watching something for information and watching something for entertainment. I'm not saying all entertainment is bad, necessarily. As human beings, there's some things we like to entertain ourselves with. Some people like to go fishing. I don't. But some people like to go fishing. Even some people like cars. Amen. And some of those things are completely legitimate. Amen. But the ministers came together. Amen. And they said, listen, we actually admit that most of the stuff on television right now is not that bad. They even said it's relatively harmless. Leave it to Beaver and this, whatever it was out at the time. I mean, it's not the gross is wicked. But this is what they said. They had the foresight. Amen. They said... While it's relatively harmless now, the trend and where this thing will lead, amen, the church of God has no business ever allowing one in their homes. And they said, as the ministry, we're going to preach against it. Amen. And it, for many decades, you couldn't find too many church, I don't think you could find too many church of God ministers that were okay with the television. I mean, I got message tapes you can listen to. I, you want to listen to them, I can get them for you. 
I can name some names of the ministers publicly, not in their home congregations, in camp meetings, publicly preaching, not to be careful, amen, not to watch it, amen. They said absolutely forbidden, not man rule, but amen, we have judged this thing by the very spirit of God, amen, and you should never have one in your home and profess to be a Christian. But I want to tell you, as things have become more accessible, we got something bigger on our hands than a box. Amen. Entertainment today is more accessible than it has ever been. And there are some things, amen, you know how you're going to have to judge them by whether or not you stand clear of the judgment. We're beyond now the ministry being able to just point blank preach against something. Amen. But now we got the spirit of the thing we got to deal with. Amen. You can get whatever you want on your telephone, on your cell phone. You can get whatever you want. Click, click, click. And I'll be honest, there's some things, amen, you just go and try to read the news. And the devil try to be putting things in there. Amen. I'll tell you, look, watch, listening, reading the news all day long really isn't all that edifying half the time. People get so wrapped up in this, wrapped up in that. Amen. I don't believe Jesus was wrapped up in social justice. I don't believe Jesus was wrapped up in politics. Amen. I don't believe Jesus. I'm, not, I'm talking about wrapped up. I didn't say he might have had a passing interest or a concern. Amen. Or this, that, and the other. But he was not out there campaigning for the next Caesar. He wasn't out there. Amen. With his little sign. Amen. Trying to get uh, be a social justice warrior. He just wasn't. Amen. The greatest justice there was, amen, was that his all atoning blood was shed on the cross of Calvary and every single man, boy, woman, girl, amen, has, a, has it available to him. Amen. And there is no racism in God's church. Amen. There, racism is sin, period. And if you're racist, you're not saved. Amen. And you're going to meet it in the judgment. Amen. You can say you're not a racist and this, that, and the other. But God knows the attitude of your heart. If you are preferring something else or another race over a, a, another race, amen, God knows it. God knows it. And so you don't need to get your little sign and go march in a parade somewhere. Amen. Because the judgment is going to reveal who is who tonight. Amen. It will reveal it in the judgment, brother. Amen. The church of God is not out there. Amen. To get on some campaign and amen. Go out there on some social justice issue. Our job as the church is to get people saved and to come down to the cross and to repent of their sins. Because they're going to go stand before God one day. Amen. And he's not going to care. Amen. If you went to Washington, D.C. If you got on the radio, if you gave money to this organization, he wants to know whether or not you're clear before him. Amen. All this wrangling on social media and all this going back and forth by the professed church of God. Have you ever witnessed anyone like that? Have you ever witnessed you spend all this time posting ads and posting this and posting this meme and that meme and this policy? And amen, I'll tell you what, it's divided some congregations right in this land in the last four or five years along the lines of politics and race. What a disgrace in the church of God. What a disgrace. God's people. It shouldn't matter if you're white, black, pink, purple with uh, polka dots. Amen. If you're washed in the blood. Amen. We should be the banner for unity. We should be the banner for holiness. Amen. If there's anybody that can throw that thing to the four winds and say we already got the answer, it ought to be the church of the living God. And then the professed church of God is the one getting wrapped up in this kind of stuff. It's carnal. It is carnal. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a concern for your country or that you shouldn't pray for your country. Amen. But the answer is not legislation. The answer is not education. The answer is salvation. Amen. You got saints feeling a certain type of way towards some saints because they have this political view and you have that political view. That ought not to be. Amen. The world's in turmoil. The world's a mess. And we got the answer. The answer is to get washed in the blood of the Lamb. All this hatred and all this discrimination and all this racism. Amen. It will end at the door of the church of God. Amen. It ends at the altar when the blood is applied. Amen. Amen. You're going to the judgment for what you posted on Facebook. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, you're going to the judgment for it. You're going to answer for it. Amen. What, what kind of taste are you leaving in people's mouth? After they read your post. Would they come to your church after they read what you wrote? Amen. Would they come? 
Amen. It's not what you said. It's how you said it. It was the attitude in which you said it. You're going back and forth, back and forth. Probably don't even know you're a Christian, some people. Probably don't even know you're a Christian. Just going, just going in on a political issue. I don't know why we got on all that, but listen, people need to wake up. Amen. We got judgment day coming. We got judgment day. All this reform. We want to reform this and we want to reform. I'll tell you where the reform needs to start right down here. Amen. You need a heart reformation. Amen. We need a heart. Where's that campaign? Amen. Where's that campaign? If people would expend all their energy that they're expending on political efforts and social efforts into the work of the kingdom of God, I believe the kingdom of God would be advanced. We'd be further along the road down. Amen. Listen, I'll tell you, I want the country to go in a good direction too. Amen. I want to see uh, good be uh, encouraged where it's encouraged. And, amen. I want to do our part. But listen, I'm not, my hope isn't in Washington, D.C. My hope is not in the Supreme Court of the United States. They've let me down enough. Amen. My, listen, I don't have any hope for this country other than a, re, a revival. This is what this country needs. Amen. Worried about the Supreme Court and the judges on the Supreme Court. What about the one sitting in heaven? I mean, you're going to stand before that judge. And listen, that one's going to have an eternal impact on you. People worried about, amen, is the country going to be impacted for the new, next two decades? Well, what about for all eternity? Amen, how concerned are you about that impact? Amen, your co-workers are going to hell. Your family is going to hell. Amen, and you're worried about if they're voting Democrat or Republican. You're more burned about whether or not they're voting along your party lines or, if, amen, they're on your social justice campaign and they see that your views are the same. Amen, they're going to split hell wide open. They're going to split hell wide open if you don't wake up and get under a burden, amen, and start talking to them about their souls, amen, and start saying, listen, that's not your answer, that's not where it's at, but I want you to meet someone who can change your life. Listen, white people hate black people, black people hate white people, amen, Hispanics and blacks and this, that, and the other. I want to tell you what the problem is, it's sin. That is the problem, and the only thing that's going to solve that problem is to get rid of sin, Amen. Listen, we, we all can vote. We can sit anywhere we want on a bus now in the United States of America. Amen. And I'm not saying that everything's peachy. And I'm not saying everything's perfect. Amen. But what I'm saying is it's no longer become about equality. Amen. And things that maybe even a, a Christian could get behind. But now, amen, people are trying to legislate hatred out of the hearts of mankind. And you cannot do that. You cannot do it. People think I can educate them out of it. I can legislate them out of it. Listen, the devil is the same devil, amen, that has been working for the last 6,000 years. I'll tell you, hatred started right back there at the beginning of time, amen, when Cain rose up and slew his own brother. Slew his own brother. Hatred don't care. Hatred doesn't care. Amen. It doesn't care what color you are. Amen. But people today, they want, a, they want an issue to get behind. They want a cause. I'll give you a cause. Amen. The cause of Jesus Christ. You're going to the judgment, man. You're going to the judgment. You're going to stand before God. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. We have the highest profession in the world. We claim... Amen. Salvation. We, we claim freedom from sin. We claim holiness. We have the greatest gift that human spirits ever found. Amen. And yet we're so, uh, we're so uh, uh, unwilling sometimes and try to be so uh, bashful and backward in sharing the greatest gift that human spirits ever found. Did you find it? You say you found the answer. Amen, you found the answer. You found peace. You, found, you don't think there's people out there that want peace? Amen, they don't want satisfaction? They don't, they're not tired of sin? You're telling me that, amen, your family is not tired of sin? You're telling me you got, you know, your, your co-workers, they're not tired of sin? You're telling me your neighbors, amen, there's not some of them that are sick and tired of sin? But where, till they, where do they go? If they looked at your life, amen, would they go? Is it attractive? Have you made salvation look attractive or has it become a drudgery to you? 
they're going to the judgment. Amen. And you are responsible for some of that. Amen. That influence you carried. Amen. I, heaven forbid that we ever negatively, amen, negatively impress someone. Amen. Concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That they were watching our lives. Amen. They might have been persecuting you, talking about you. Amen. But they were watching. And they saw something unseemly. Amen. You got out of order. Amen. I thought he was a Christian. I mean, I thought he was really a Christian. Not that brother. Amen. I know some people who go to church on Sunday and live like the devil Monday through Saturday. But him, I thought he was a straight shooter. Amen. I thought he was pure. I thought he was right. Amen. But, man, I heard the ruckus at his house the other night. I heard the pots and pans flying. I heard the disgusting, I heard the way he talked to the clerk at the grocery store. Amen, I heard him. I heard him on the phone with the telemarketer. I heard him, I heard him, I heard him. I heard that attitude. Amen, I saw what he posted on Facebook. I saw it. I'm not interested. Not interested. We're going to go to the judgment for that. We're going to answer for that. We're going to answer for that. Amen. We're going to ask, Amen. How much do you care about the name Church of God in your community, in your neighborhood? How much do you really care about it? Amen. Because if you, Amen, can go out into the world and leave a negative and leave a negative impression about the church of the living God in the community, you're going to the judgment. And I'll tell you, the hand of God is against you. Amen. You owe an apology. Amen. You owe an apology. I knew a brother even recently. Amen. He had done something disorderly had preached this gospel. He had preached this gospel. He fell. He fell hard. Amen. But when he got right, he, he repented. Amen. And I don't know exactly where he might stand at this moment, but one thing he did is he went and knocked on about 500 doors in his community and he apologized to the community for the actions he took. Amen. And for the stain on the reputation of the church of God in the name of Christ because of what he did. And I tell you, there's some people that owe an apology to the community. Amen. They owe an apology to the community. They owe an apology for how they represented Christ on their job. They, they owe an apology for how they represented Christ. Amen. When they went to the grocery store, they owe an apology. Amen. To how they treated their neighbors. Amen. The dog, it might be annoying that their dog relieved himself on your yard, but you better watch your attitude. You better watch your attitude. Go over there and give a piece of your mind and this, that. And listen, you might be completely justified, amen, in the eyes of the world for saying what you say. But are you justified in the eyes of Christ? We live to a higher standard than that. Amen. We ought to be able to take some things on the chin. And listen. You better be careful about this rendering evil for evil. This passive aggressive stuff. Amen. You just kind of do it slightly. You just kind of, you, you, you kind of took a little jab there with your words. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't curse them out. You, you wouldn't do that. But you had to make a little comment. God, God help us. Maybe check ourselves. We're going to the judgment. We're going to the judgment. Well, amen, I'm just going to, I'm going to get it in. I'm going to say, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going to curse them out. I'm not going to go, but I know I'm going to agitate. I, I'm going to, I'm going to stoke the flame here a little bit because either, maybe I don't even say a word. Maybe that's the problem. Now you're not talking. Well, I'm just being quiet. No, you're not. You're not just being quiet. That would be nice, maybe, if you were just being quiet, but there's something else behind that. There's something else behind that. Amen, I had a co-worker, and he told me he knew when he needed to go help his wife in the kitchen. I said, how was that? He said, the noise is coming out of there. The way those pots and pans were banging around in there, he thought, well, I better get in there. That ought not to be. That ought not to be. I'm sorry, it just ought not to be. Amen, you're going to go to the judgment for that kind of stuff. Amen. You're going to answer for that kind of stuff. Because listen, it's not just what you did, but it's why you did it. It's why you did it. What provoked that? What you can you can handle your children out of frustration. Not out of correction. You just got mad. They just didn't do what you wanted them to do. So pop. And the child hardly knows what he did.
better watch it. You better watch that. The Bible says to train up a child, not make them robots. Just because they didn't do what you wanted them to do, you got angry. Listen, there's a way to handle that kind of stuff. One old six-year-old sister, she wrote a book on child training. She woke up, and she said, listen, don't you be spanking your child if they don't understand why they're getting spanked. If they have no idea what they're getting hit for, amen, all you're doing is hitting. That's all you've done. Amen. We're going to the judgment, saints. We're going to the judgment. Amen. I, I've, I, I, I've, been raised, I've been raised around the church of God. I know spank this and spank that, but we better be careful with all that. We better be careful with all that because, listen, I know a lot of church of God children never sniff the door of the church again because of the inconsistency in their home, but their parents didn't withhold the belt. Oh, they, they, oh, they, 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 they were strong disciplinarians, but they knew mom and dad weren't living it like that. Mom and dad coming home and back talking about the preacher and well, I don't think we need to do all that and then they were fussing and they were fighting but boy you better listen to me really well listen as soon as I don't have to listen to you guess what I'm not doing see ya most of the ones I grew up with they're gone they're gone and believe me we were all spanked sometimes over, all over the same thing because we were all doing the same thing together amen but you spank, you correct, amen, because of correction. Amen, because of correction. Amen, God help us. God help us. Amen. Some people might be looking at you, your kids being bad, and you feel that pressure, so you just do something. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you just doing it because you're embarrassed? Or are, they are, they, are, you are you training? I know, I know people, people who don't have kids give the best, the best parental advice. Amen. I, I remember before Abigail, amen, people had all types of things to say. Amen. I mean, they had the best advice. Amen. Don't let so-and-so pick up your kid. Amen. Don't let, don't let the young people hold your child. I mean, they, 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 I'm not saying the advice was bad, but there's some things you're just going to have to learn on the job. And you're going to make some mistakes along the way. But the Bible says, provoke not your children to wrath. Amen. Our interactions between husband and wife, we're going to the judgment for it. See, you, 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 you were frustrated. You said it out of frustration. But you've got to get that right. You've got to get that right. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen. Many people go into bed with things. Amen. Harboring things. And then two weeks later, it all comes out. It's not okay. And I'm not saying that sometimes we're going to have, to, we're going to have some learning curves. We're going to, have to learn how to, we're going to have to learn how to negotiate some of these things. But honey, I didn't handle that right. I, I remember in the classroom a couple years ago, I talked about with brother recently. The kids were bad. And they were bad. And you have to sometimes be very firm. Amen. In order to get a, the, the attention and the respect. That, and one time God showed me, you did, you went too far. You went too far. It was too much. That was too much. I, I ended up, even in Sunday school in St. Jackson, I, I, I told him, look, this, this is what happened. I, wanna, I wanna be clear. I, it was too much. I came too hard, it was too firm. And the impression I might have left in their minds of me, I didn't want that impression left. I want my students to know, listen, I still like you. I'm still here to help you. I'm still here to support you. Amen. But there's some, all I had, I didn't have to go as far as I did. I'd have, so the next day, yes, I apologized to some 12, 13-year-old kids. I'd rather humble myself. I'd rather humble myself. God checked me. God checked me. See, the problem is people are going past the check. They're going past the check. Amen. God check you. Amen. It won't be an issue with the judgment if you respond to the check and act accordingly. But it's going to be an issue if you ignore the check and you go on anyways. My God, 1 John 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein, this is how our love is made perfect. Our love for God is made perfect. That we may have boldness. That word means boldness or assurance or confidence. That we may have boldness 
in the day of judgment. Say to God, we're not supposed to be going to the judgment with our knees knocking. We should be hastening the day of the Lord, looking for and hastening the coming of the Lord. Amen. And I, I listen, I understand there's, there's a fear, there's a healthy fear that comes with the judgment because of the finality of it. Because of the finality of it. You, it's very serious. Amen. But we, if, if there's something in our life that we're not comfortable going to the judgment with, we got to get that taken care of. You meet it now or you meet it then. I wouldn't go to the judgment trying to take a long shot. I wouldn't go to the judgment trying to take a long shot. I'm hoping for the best. Come on, I want to have assurance. I want to have boldness in the day of judgment. I know I'm going to heaven. I know I've kept it clear as I went. I kept it clear as I went. I did proper maintenance. If we owe an apology, we owe an apology. But see, some people want to be so spiritual. Uh, I'm led of the spirit, so I don't, I don't need to apologize. I, was in the, you know, I, don't, I don't get in the flesh. No, sometimes you're going to, have to need to apologize. Maybe you didn't have a bad intention. Maybe you didn't even mean anything bad by it, but it was taken that way. Or maybe it came off that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. brother or maybe your brother, you know your brother's feeling a certain type of way towards you. And you're just trying to ignore it. Just trying to ignore it. The Bible says, go to your brother. Leave your gift at the altar. Leave your gift at the altar. Meaning, don't exercise yourself. Don't try to offer anything. Just leave it and go to your brother. Well, I don't feel like I owe them an apology. Well, it's not about what you feel. Maybe you don't owe them an apology. Can you go to your brother anyway? Could you try to go get it? Maybe you are justified. Like what was Peter? He said, it's one thing if you're at fault and you take it patiently. I mean, come on. You're at fault. You, you ought to take it patiently. Your fault, man. But what about when it's not your fault? And then you take it patiently. He said, that's what's something to God. That's actually what I means. The, the other thing, man, he, the world, a worldly person can do that. They can do that. Uh, my fault, man. I'm sorry. There's some worldly people that can back up. But it's a whole different thing when you're not at fault. And you're not to blame. And you are still required by the word of God to take that thing patiently. Because why? I think Peter goes on in that same chapter to say, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. I mean, Jesus didn't render evil for evil. He did, and he had the greatest assault given to him. He was rendered evil all the time. He was done dirty. He was done wrong. He was talked about. Amen. Attitudes. 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 You know why attitudes are so hard? Because they're so easy to get. I mean, attitudes can come just like that. You, you, your feelings, your feelings and your attitudes, they're attached. You're human. There is some things that it's going to be natural to give in to a certain feeling. Amen. And there's going to be some things you're going to have to commend unto God who judges, I'll commit it to God that judges righteously. Attitude. Attitude. Well, my mother-in-law come in, she's getting in my fridge and in my cabinets. She better stay out. Well, maybe she does need to stay out, but you better watch your attitude. I'm trying to get to church on time and she is still in that house. What could she possibly be doing? He's supposed to be, he said he was getting off at 5 and it's 6.30. Where's he at? And he comes home and now you got an attitude. Now you got an attitude. You got the silent treatment going. Yeah, it's probably annoying. Frustrating. But you got to keep your spirit. You got to keep your spirit. Amen. Things on the job. You watch your attitude. Better watch your attitude. Better watch your attitude. Well, I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. Really? Well, you may not need to be employed. And you might not make heaven because of your attitude. 
See, some people have taken things that were, were, a, were, a, were a, a, a temporal problem and it's become a spiritual one because of their attitude. It could have just stayed being a temporal one. And you could have taken it to the Lord and, and, and kept it right there. But now, because you have a certain attitude about it, is now it's a spiritual one. It's a spiritual problem. May God help us. Amen. May God help us. We're going to the judgment. I want to have boldness. I want to have boldness in the judgment. I want to be judgment day ready. Amen. Before I go to bed at night, man, Lord, help me check myself over. Lord, you check me. Matthew 7, please. We're hastening to a close here. We're going to let you go shortly. Matthew chapter 7. Verse number 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. These are some familiar scriptures. I believe you've been around the church any period of time. These are probably some scriptures that have been read in your hearing many times. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh, there's going to be some preachers that are not needing the judgment, brother. There are going to be some preachers that are not knee, knee knocking in the judgment. And they preached in the name of the Lord. Oh, they were dynamic behind the pulpit. They were demonstrative. They preached with some power. Amen. But the, they know how they were at home. You're all that in the pulpit and a bag of chips. Amen, but you're an empty bag of chips at home. Amen, come on. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. We did this, we did that. I was on the usher board, I was a deacon, I was in the choir, I taught Sunday school. Amen, I preached, I did this, all of these things. Not everyone that saith unto me, sorry, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them. Can you imagine standing face to face before God, thinking you've done this, and you've done that? Amen. You, oh, you, you were just such a good prayer, and you had your little devotion, and amen, you went to church on Sunday, amen, and you sung in the choir, and you taught Sunday school, and you did all these things, and then to hear the Lord say, I don't know you. That word new, talking about intimacy, knowing God in an intimate way, not knowing of God or who, his name, but you, like in the scripture, uh, and Adam knew his wife. I mean, he had a close relationship. I mean, he knew his wife, intimate relationship with his wife. That's the kind of relationship you're supposed to have with Christ. He made that intimacy with Christ. But he said, I don't know you. Not, not like that. Oh, you preached. Who are you? You did all the works. You did all the outward things. You had your sleeves down to the wrist bone. Amen. You had that nice short haircut, brother. Amen. You had that nice long skirt, sister. Amen. You, amen. You, you knew the word. And amen. You looked good in front of the saints. And amen. You got the camp meeting going with your testimony. You went through all the outward. But God said, look, as far as knowing you, I don't know you. I never knew you. Who are you? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. I want us to think about just those three words for a moment. You're standing before God in the judgment. And you know this is it. The only thing before you is all eternity. And he says, depart from me. I'm telling you, saints of God, there's nothing worth not humbling yourself over now. I don't care if we preached. I don't care how long we've been around. If there's something in our life, amen, that we are not clear on. Amen, that we're not ready to meet God in the judgment about. Amen, we're just not sure about it. Amen, I would rather... Get 100% certain, 100% sure right now, tonight, than to ever hear those three words, depart from me. Some of us have invested a lot of time in the church of God. We know a lot of truth. Can you imagine that all being in vain? Because you decided to neglect 
Amen. You decided to neglect. Amen. You kept that attitude. You wouldn't humble yourself and make that apology. Amen. I don't care how right and justified you might feel about something. Amen. It's not worth hearing depart from me over. You don't need Brother Nathan or any preacher to start pinpointing this, that, and the other. You know what it is tonight if it's in the way. You know what it is. You're just not clear. You're just not comfortable about it. You're trying to pray. And in the back of your mind, in the back of your mind, it's, it's nagging at you. It's kind of, it's bothering you. It's on your mind. It's on your, I'd get that thing clear tonight. I'd make that phone call tonight. Amen. I'd get down in prayer before God tonight. I'd confess it tonight before I hear depart from me. Depart from me. And listen, ye that work iniquity. So this tells me this scripture right here was not for the out and out sinner. They know, listen, the out and out sinner knows where they're going. This ain't going to be no shock to them in the judgment. He's talking about people who have professed. People that know this truth. And they know this gospel. Depart from me. You worked iniquity. Iniquity. Meaning, it wasn't out and out sin. It was some deception there. There was some dishonesty there. Amen. There were some things done undercover. Amen. That you never dealt with. That you never dealt with. In closing, Luke chapter 12, please. I say the judgment's right around the corner. And we would do well to live that way. We would do well to live that way. You may say, well, they've been talking about the world ending and the judgment coming for years and years and years. Well, that just means one thing. It's closer than it's ever been before. I had a, someone tell me recently, I, I don't like the church of God because uh, they, they always preach about the end of the world. And it's negative. Well, listen, it might be negative to you, I guess, but it's also true. The world's going to end one day. And you know, I think, I think it was Peter again who said, uh, in the last days there shall be scoffers. Meaning as, as we get closer to the last day, there's going to be less and less people that believe it. They're going to scoff at it. Oh, the world ain't ended, man. It's sad. What, what was it, a couple years ago? Uh, I think his name was like Harold something. He said he predicted the, the, day, the end of the world. This was, I mean, this happens every probably decade or so. But amen. They predict that on this day the world's going to end. But you know what the sad thing that it's done to people? It's, it's, it's immune. Like they don't believe it anymore. They don't believe it. When it actually is going to happen, when it actually does happen one day, they've been so desensitized to it. They never saw it coming. Luke chapter 12, we're going to close right here. Verse uh, number 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother. It's amazing what some people think that Jesus is remotely interested in. You may say, well, isn't he concerned about all the things that I'm concerned about? Well, no, no, not necessarily. He's not necessarily concerned about everything you're concerned about because there's some things you don't even need to be concerned about. He's said, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. He's not giving me my portion of the inheritance. This isn't fair. I'm going to go, go tell Jesus on you. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? You think I'm going to involve myself in your, in, in who gets what in the inheritance? With all due respect, you think I care about this matter? I'm not touching that. You go work that out. Go work that out. Don't bring that to me. Like I, I'm not. I'm the wrong guy. I'm not a judge. I'm not the lawyer. I'm not going to litigate this for you. And he said unto them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And then he goes into this parable. Saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. 
Oh, he was abounding. He was, this, was, this was the epitome of success right here. There was people in the community that I want to be like Mr. So-and-so, man. He worked hard. He went to college. Amen. He got his degree. He got his business. He this, that, and the other. And man, look it. Do you see that new barn going up on his property? You take your son down there. Listen, you work hard. You can have that too. You want to be like him. I mean, this man was prosperous. And listen, there is nothing wrong with working hard. Amen. And providing for your family. Amen. And increasing financial security. There's nothing sinful about that. But your life doesn't consist in those things. You don't live for those things. And he thought within himself, saying, I highly doubt he verbally said this. But it's just his way of thinking. Some people, it's just their way of thinking is so incredibly worldly it is so incredibly worldly amen they they just they're so focused on earthly things Th that was this man he was just so focused on the things of the world and he thought within himself saying what shall i do man i have no room where to bestow my fruits my goods my production i don't know where to put it all man and that's just about america today People have so much stuff. Their basements are stuffed. They got a storage unit. They got, amen, they got attic, the attic stuffed to capacity. They got so much stuff, they don't even know what stuff they have. Believe me, I moved recently. I, I know. You don't even know you had some stuff. Stuff. Maxed out. And he said, this will I do. Again, I don't think he said this out loud. I mean, it's just, he was just thinking. He was, he was planning. He was, he was maneuvering. He was negotiating. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns. I don't know really why he had to pull them down. Just build another one or whatever you need to do. But I, I, listen, this is, what I, I, this is what I'm going to do. I'll pull down my barns. And I'm going to build greater. I'm not going to distribute this to the poor or the needy or see how God wants this to be used for the progression of the kingdom. No, no, no. This is about me. And there will I bestow all my good fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, and this is what people are saying to their soul today without ever verbally saying it. Soul, thou hast much goods. Laid up for many years. I have set myself up for success. I am secure. Take thine ease. Eat. This sounds like Laodicea to me, brother. This sounds like the attitude of the church today to me. Eat, drink, be merry. Amen. We don't have needs. Amen. We got all that we need. I don't have, I have need of nothing. Amen. I'm good. And I will say to my soul, man, oh man, what a way to talk to the spiritual man. Verse 20. But God said unto him, thou fool. You're a fool. You're a fool. The world would have looked at this man and thought how wise he was, how successful he was. Amen. How, amen, what a role model he was. But Christ said, you're a fool. Thou fool, this night, oh, that day's coming. That day's coming. This night, thy soul. You took care of everything else, but now your soul. Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? What's it going to matter to you then? Because tonight you have an appointment with me. Oh, you had an appointment with your analyst and re re went over your financial portfolio and your retirement. And amen, you talked to Mr. So-and-so about how getting a building permit for this barn. And amen, you talked to so-and-so about, amen, how you can invest this. And then you have some young people coming over and you're going to show them around the, the property. And amen, and how they can be on the path to, uh, you know, uh, getting an education. And amen, your family you had everything and your son went to the nicest college. And amen, you, you took care of it all, man. But now it's the judgment. 
I believe what happened to this man is time went, I know it's a parable, but I believe the essence of this is time passed him by much quicker than he ever anticipated. And before he knew it, this night, it came up upon him, thy soul shall be required of thee. Don't be a fool. You're going to the judgment. And that's the most important thing you can prepare for in this life. Every deed will be made known. Amen. I believe the next scripture says, so it is to, to the man who's rich in the things of this world and not rich toward the things of God. Thou foe, this night, thy soul. He was not judgment day ready. He was ready for a lot of things, but he was not judgment day ready. Are you judgment day ready tonight? If this was your night and the book of your life were to be open and your record was to be there, every thought, every deed, every attitude, every intention, every motive, every action were to be open and weighed by Almighty God, how would you fare? How would it be? We would do wise. We would do wise to take heed to that tonight. Amen. Before we go on and we find that this night, when that night's going to come, that day's going to come, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Shall we stand? Thank God for his goodness to us.